Okay. Uh, well, thanks so much for the invitation. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be uh, telling you a bit about the things that we've been doing to uh, support data analysts in Africa um, to make maps from health data. So this is the AfriMapR project, uh, which uh, I started off about a year ago. We got money, I got money from the Wellcome Open Research Fund. And I'm based at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. Andy, could, um, could you come a little closer to your mic? Sorry, we're just yeah, hearing. Sure. Uh, Is that you. any better? That's better, thank you. Okay. So, uh, and the AfriMap R strategy is that we're developing kind of code components or building blocks to enable analysts to put together their own either kind of ad hoc, uh, ad hoc graphics or reproducible reports or web applications. Uh, and we're providing the training kind of to uh, kind of introduce those things and initiating a community around those things. And so the, the target users are uh, the growing African data science communities um, and particularly looking at uh, analysts working in public health, given that this is a, a welcome funded project. But there's it's been, you know, over the past couple of years, a real increase in uh, particularly uh, our communities uh, in Africa. So there are our user groups in, you know, uh, Nairobi, Dakar, Abidjan, uh, Lagos, and sort of act people active on uh, social media uh, within these uh, groups. So the idea is that we can uh, make uh, components and target individuals through these user, user groups and social media. So we don't have to uh, necessarily go in at an organizational level to get people to adopt things, but we can go in uh, sort of a bottom up, uh, going through individuals that are using these tools. And so some of you may have seen that about a year and a half ago, we uh, developed this uh, malaria data by district application. Um, and uh, this was uh, again um, funded, well, it was actually a welcome competition where they were trying to incentivize the reuse of malaria atlas project data. And really this was quite straightforward. What it does is all it does really is take um, some of the Malaria Atlas Project gridded raster data and tries to make them a little bit more usable. So it takes the raster data and it combines it with some administrative boundary data um, and you know, presents summaries by administrative units and allows you to sort of rank those and sort them. Uh, so from that, the idea came that you know, why there shouldn't be something that, you know, Andy in the UK is necessarily doing, but this is something that can we support data analysts with it within Africa to be doing these kind of things to develop local applications to, to solve local problems. And, you know, developing these kind of things is not necessarily particularly difficult, but of course there are sort of stumbling blocks and hurdles. And so the idea was to, to sort of reduce the friction to make it uh, easier to do some of the, these things and by making components that that uh, analysts could select and kind of piece together um, around open data administrative boundaries then kind of manipulating those data um, and visualizing in some way and so as well as having uh, the components then we want to uh, sort of provide some training to allow uh, or, or to make it easier for people to use them. And so we've just um, started releasing um, or to start developing really some tutorials. So uh, that's if you were to click on the link in the presentation, it will take you to one of these online interactive tutorials. And one of the nice things about these is it allows us to uh, put a tutorial up on the web online that uh, users can use without needing to have R installed. So you can you can download the the tutorials and use them within R, you know, run them locally. But also, you know, we can we can host them online. So they have kind of like an index on the left here, and we can uh, go through some text and some uh, graphics. I'll just whiz through them now, and some code windows. And well, the nice thing about this technology is that uh, you have sort of like a code box like this, and I can, that's just got some 
R code within it, I can press the run code button and it will execute the R code and give me, give me the result. And if I go on to a later one, again here, we've got the map that is produced by this code. And if I go in there and look at, so currently the capital cities are displayed with blue uh, circles. And if I go in there and uh, comment out, so in R, a hash comments out a line, I can rerun the code. Um, and then, you know, now I've, now the dots aren't there anymore. And also I can do something, if I comment out this first line, which is required, um, it then gives me, you know, the same error message that I was get, I would get if I was using R um, on my local machine. And then we can put little quizzes in there. So we've got a quiz where uh, we can test what people have learned in it and they need to submit an answer and we can give some feedback on, on the answer. Um, so that's where we're starting. We've got um, three of those tutorials up now. Um, and you know everything everything that we do is completely open source it's all uh, there you can see it from our github repository we've got a number of other kind of prototype and uh, demo applications we've just uh, recently been doing something on health facilities well with with the covid epidemic that kind of we rerouted some of what we were doing to um uh, look at open data sources for health facility and service information. And we've actually uh, written a paper kind of reviewing the different uh, sources of information, but as well uh, created this uh, application where you can um, select any African country and it will compare different uh, data sources. So uh, in purple, just sort of quickly, are uh, uh, these are data that are hosted by WHO at the moment, and in green we've got some data from OpenStreetMap. And one of the patterns that we see for some countries is, is that uh, the data are more complete in, in this WHO data, which is um, compiled from master facility lists, um, particularly in rural areas, but then we can have uh, richer data uh, within uh, urban areas from the OpenStreetMap data where OpenStreetMap um, communities are more active. And we can also look at uh, the uh, distribution of facility types from the uh, different data sources. Um, so I'm conscious that we're, uh, we don't have too much time left. So this is uh, where we are at the moment. We're you know, currently looking at getting more users and developers involved with this. And we've got about four months funding uh, left. So we're sort of getting slightly nervous about uh, how we're gonna keep this going, but we're, uh, we're optimistic for the future and um, yeah we you know invite any kind of feedback and uh, and anything that anyone wants to uh, say about this and uh, just one other very quick sort of link to the previous talk uh, with Lucia's work so uh, and to big up our um, so I just um, downloaded from the um, from the malaria threats map I took the um, invasive species data so I could just download that as a an Excel, an Excel file, save the CSV file, and you know, within about uh, ten lines of R, I can make a, a an interactive map um, that you know. Then potentially, this could be something that uh, people could combine with other data sources to make something uh, that would be useful for them. Uh, so I think that's me. So thank you very much.